Differentiated 5G connectivity has become increasingly relevant in this era of network transformation. Joining me with details is Yosef Latoyev, Head of Strategy and Portfolio at Ericsson Cloud Software and Services. Yosef, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. So what is differentiated 5G connectivity and why is it so relevant now? Yeah, so it's an excellent question. So differentiated connectivity is basically the ability to use 5G to drive a different user experience at the end of the day. And we've had a fairly slow uptake of end-to-end -end 5G uh, with uh, about now 18% penetration, which is a bit slower than what we expected. But differentiation is ultimately about how do we create value out of this standalone capability? How do we then program network capability end-to-end -to, -end to address specific use cases instead of having this single best effort um, use case, basically, which is how we provide connectivity today. So are you proposing new technology that replaces network slicing? No, quite the opposite, actually. So what we are proposing is basically to use network slices to generate what we now call performance classes. So we, we are describing four performance classes. Uh, the first one is advanced adaptive buffering. This is very much what we have, um, where we can provide an end-to-end -end buffering buffered solution that adapts to what you need in the end user. Then you have fixed immediate. This is more for uh, fixed wireless access or a continuous stream of data. Um, you have fixed buffered, and then you have adaptive, which is very much the mobile broadband use case we know today, the best effort mobile broadband use case. And these four performance classes can then be materialized through pre-configured network slices. So this is really about simplifying the consumption of the network slicing capability that is already available from the portfolio today. So one example is this type of use case. A TV broadcaster is in a crowded environment trying to ensure that he has the right quality of service. So he can provide a live capture, uh, leveraging the fixed immediate type of use case, which makes sure that he has the right flow of data for a live broadcast on the uplink. So he can transmit the data up in a continuous way, in a consistent way. Uh, this, for example, was used in the coronation, and the, the use case was demonstrated in the coronation in the UK as a way to ensure that the broadcasting equipment had the right latency and, and throughput in a highly congested environment. So how can service providers manage the needs of multiple actors in a doable manner? Yeah. So what we've seen is that with these four performance classes, we can address a large variety of use cases. And you can then ap apply these performance classes in different ways to different user actors and different user places is what we call them. So like I said, the broadcast use case is one that can use one of those use cases. We have perform um, different use places like a stadium where you can apply this type of capability as well. We have a couple of examples now with customers doing this in real time. Uh, in Australia, Telstra is now leveraging this technology to deploy factories in a much more agile way, in a highly scalable way, where you don't have to deploy a lot of infrastructure in the local site. You can use a performance class to support um, the site in a good way. What is Ericsson doing to enable service providers to manage and commercialize differentiated connectivity? So we have now launched a full suite of products, both in the radio and the core, to enable operators not only to deploy, but to manage slices in an effective way or differentiated connectivity performance classes. Um, so this includes, so in 2023, at the end of the year, uh, we launched an advanced toolkit then, both in our radio, uh, for example, our advanced MIMO solutions with different software algorithms, and also in our core uh, to support these slices across the network. We've also launched then uh, even in the Ericsson Service Orchestrator, which is one way to manage and deploy the slices end-to-end -end across your network, both in the radio and the core. Uh, and we are also deploying assurance capability as part of the ESOA uh, to enable the monitoring of the slices in a good way. So this is really about being a multi-domain, multi-vendor orchestration capability end-to-end -to, -end to allow operators to deploy these slices, manage the slices, and assure the slices effectively to then deliver on the promise of the performance classes and allow customers to, to kind of demonstrate the benefits of the capability as well. What is your recommendation to service providers who want to capture the value of this technology? So to start with, we have to get away from the paradigm of best effort, right? So we have to be able to monetize beyond best effort. And we as an industry have to come together and leverage these capabilities towards our customers in a good way. We have different technology enablers then via URSP, uh, which is one way for the device to trigger the connection to specific classes, and also APIs as a different way to allocate specific subscribers or provide different levels of quality of service through the Vonage platform then as well. 
On top of that, we also recommend that we start this as a phased approach. As I said, you can do this in specific use places instead of trying to go for full network coverage. So starting with a stadium or a factory to start deploying. And then we, of course, at Ericsson are here to support the customer, the CSPs, on that journey as they articulate the value proposition to their customers and work with the developer ecosystem to consume the capability in an effective way. Youssef, thank you so much for being with me today. Thank you very much.